This is the first of a series of uh, video blogs that we're doing, and uh, with that, we're going to talk about certain subjects that come up continuously. We get phone calls about one of which is HPM motors. Uh, we designed HPM motors around the Nirvana product beginning back in 2001, and I have today a sample of a rare earth magnet to show you the, the strength of the HPM motor. <clears throat> this is a neodymium uh, ferrous boron magnet. Uh, it has about uh, the magnetism of maybe 12,000 times that of a normal magnet this size. And one of the things you have to be careful about is get too close to metal objects. And uh, with that, never get it too close to your cell phone either <laughs> because your cell phone suddenly reads in Arabic when you do that. Oh well. <laughs> We also mentioned about transferring magnetism through the laminations of the motor. And in doing that, I'm going to demonstrate that by simply taking this clip, putting the magnet on the end of it. As you see, all the magnetism is transferred out this fine wire, and that's the way it works through the motor on the, on the rotor housing. This is what makes that motor very, very powerful. And the only way that the, these magnets can lose their magnetism is by being overheated, and that temperature is quite high. Now with that, again, an HPM motor, as, as you know, we've uh, had a written blog about this. Uh, it has a flat efficiency curve. It also has a flat power factor curve. So in the linear exchange of energy versus output, it's basically a 45 degree angle. As you drop in capacity, the horsepower requirement drops equivalently. It's linear in the way it responds to, to uh, being ramped down. Now, one other thing that we discuss with HPM motor is the, the drive. Uh, again, HPM motors have to be driven by an inverter, uh, uniquely by an inverter. They're not suitable for starting with a star delta, y delta, starter, full voltage, anything like that. But in that, we're able to, in fact, provide a, 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 an inverter duty machine that uh, is linked back to the controller, the Ingersoll Rand controller. So therefore, you have this integration of controls and drive that is not surpassed by anybody else in the industry. Uh, with that, we have the ability to ramp at different pressures, uh, and all that can be done with one machine. A uh, customer can change pressures literally uh, in a matter of seconds, uh, and, and when changing pressures gets more capacity out of the machine because there's a logarithm built into the memory of the, the CPU unit that says when I'm running at this pressure I have more capacity available. So I'll bring up those points about, about HPM. A quick question, Ed. does anybody else have the same motors? No, the, do you no, know no, uh, Atlas Copco has involved uh, a, 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 a permanent magnet motor in one of their centrifugals now. But we're fairly unique with that. A lot of other uh, manufacturers use either premium motors or induction uh, motors uh, and the inverter duties class to, to run with inverters. We, we chose to use the HPM motor because basically of its size, it's, it's quite small, and also because it has three times the magnetic flux, meaning power, magnetic power that a traditional induction motor has. So that makes a very, very strong motor. Uh, and as you know, most of our applications, we literally, in uh, the uh, oil flooded sense, hang the motor off the air end shaft. So there's economies of size, but the biggest thing is the strength of the motor. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you were to trace the efficiency and the whole range of the motor, its curve is basically flat. The power factor is also basically flat. Okay. Uh, we, we don't outreach the motor. Uh, the reason that we shut the machine off at a particular point is a point that we'll talk about in a few minutes is the, uh, the blow-by between the rotors that okay. we talked about earlier. The motor itself can ramp down to, to a very, very slow RPM without any consequences at all. We Good. limit it because of application to our rotor set. So kind of like to save energy and, and but like you said, we can talk about that in a little bit. One other question, simple question. Mm -hmm. What does HPM mean? Thank Hybrid for. permanent magnet. Thank you. Hybrid permanent magnet. And that is a trademark by Leroy Samaire. Well, we don't own that trademark, they do. But it's uh, that uh, that is their trademark and with that we had a licensing agreement with them that has been extended uh, to be uniquely the only user of that motor in the compressor industry. Now, by the way, Leroy supplies a similar motor for escalators, for bullet trains, use uh, hybrid permanent magnet motors because of they're, they're ramping up, slowing down, there's continuous speed changes. Mm -hmm. Even some forklifts live, use permanent magnet motors, forklifts use permanent magnet motors because they're constantly backing up, going forward, stopping, speeding up, slowing down. So that motor has to be able to accommodate a whole range of, of speeds and startings and stoppings uh, and not 
overheat in that process. And currently, we're using these motors in, 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 what comp in which ones of our compressors? And in our flooded screw machines from 50 through uh, 300 horsepower, and in our oil-free machines from 50 to 200 horsepower. Thank you.